delighted to be with you live today from our studio and a very special guest with us today. And um, I want to uh, welcome him to the program. Walter, welcome to, um, to Richard Land Live. Richard, it's a pleasure to be here. Tell, tell us a little bit, uh, tell our listeners a little bit about who you are and how we met. <laughs> well, I'm the president and founder of the Issues for Life Foundation. We work directly with African-American pastors, leaders, churches, in an effort just to get them on board with the pro-life movement. And we met in Washington, D.C. not very long ago. Well, we did, and we were there to uh, tape a, um, a program calling on people for, to get involved in the 4040 prayer program. Uh, absolutely. Pray and Act is, is a dedicated effort to pray and fast for our country for such a time as this. Indeed. Um, we, uh, we need to, um, uh, to do that, and we have our own uh, version of that called 4040prayer.com, and I hope people will go to it and look and see because we need to pray, and, and um, if, if you feel called to do so, to fast for the future of our country during this time. Um, uh, Walter Hoya, um, tell us about what work you're involved in um, that brought you to um, to Washington, and, and I'm, you're coming to us today from Birmingham. I am. I am. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the line now primarily because uh, I'm very concerned about the horrific numbers uh, surrounding abortion in the African-American community, and, and Richard, they are just... Um, they're just horrific. Well, I know they are. And, Walter, if people want to know more about you and more about your organization, is there a website they can go to? They can go to www.issues, that's plural, four as in the number four, life, L-I-F-E, dot O-R-G. So that's www.issues, four, life, dot O-R-G. All right, and the four is a number four. It's a number four. Well, Walter, um, I found out yesterday, um, just in conversation with you, that you're a fellow Southern Baptist. I am. Um, how long? Have you, how long have you been a Southern Baptist? I've been a Southern Baptist now for oh, maybe twenty five years or more. Well, praise the Lord. And um, now, where are you from originally? Um, I'm born um, in Detroit, Michigan, in 1968. Uh, Daddy moved us all the way out to California. Well, you ought to be praising your daddy. <laughs> I sure am. <laughs> For moving you to California. So when did you move to California? Uh, we went to California primarily, uh, well, because my dad's a piece of black history. He became the first African-American to um, break the color line in the NFL regarding the front office. So, uh-huh. uh, Buddy Young uh, broke the color line in, in New York uh, at the main office. New York, and Daddy did it with the San Diego Chargers uh, in California. Well, great. That's wonderful. So you moved out there when you were young. I did. I did. I was about uh, 12 years old when I went out there. So you consider yourself a Californian? Uh, uh, Yes, I do, but uh, I'm a a Michigan State University graduate. Ah, okay. So you're a Spartan. Yeah, I, I came on back. And uh, I had a really good time. Finished a bachelor's and a master's degree at Michigan State. Well, Walter, we um, uh, one, the reason I wanted to have you on. We had we talked a little bit about this last week. We had um, uh, Ovita King on talking about uh, she was on her Freedom Ride for Life bus um, with Father Pavone, and we 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 interviewed her live from the bus. But. Um, you know, I have become increasingly concerned as I have found out more and more about um, the terrible ravaging that has been done to the African American community by abortion. Um, you know, she was sharing with us uh, last week that the birth rate now for African Americans in this country is 1.9. Now, replacement rate, just to stand still, is 2.1. So, in essence, abortion is lowering the black population in the United States. And you were sharing with me about what the birth rate was before Roe v. Wade and what has happened since Roe v. Wade. 
Absolutely. Uh, when you look at 1970, you'll see the birth rate for African Americans was 3.0. Uh, traditionally, we have always had large families. That, that's no secret. Uh, but you don't see that anymore. That, that's a phenomenon of the past. And if you consider the 2006 census, uh, African Americans are now down to 1.9. So we've come down from 3.0 to 1.9, which is below the replacement level. Which is why African Americans have not increased as a percentage of the population. In fact, they're static and beginning to decrease as a percentage of the population because of that and because of immigration. Now, um, I know this, but some of our readers may not. Talk to us about how this is. This was part of the plan in Planned Parenthood and in the pro-abortion movement from the very beginning. Absolutely. If you go back uh, about 150 years ago, uh, even while we were still slaves, right before the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, African Americans were worth about oh, $3 billion. That's an estimate, more than any bank, uh, more than the railroads, corporations, all put together. But once we became free, we became a liability uh, to the company, uh, country. And so there were some wealthy elites that put together a plan to deal with what they called the Negro problem. Now, these were not Southerners. Uh, no, uh, they were not. Because Southerners were out of the game. I mean, after the war... Um, you know, Southerners were were trying to rebuild their burned out homes. I mean, these were these were Northern elites. Absolutely, and I'm glad you you, you mentioned that. Uh, there's no question about that. And their their strategy, their overall goal was to eliminate the African American population. And they have found that by way of abortion to be their most effective tool at this point. Well, I was stunned um, when um, I came across a a, um, a documentary called is it Ma- Maafa 21? Yes, sir, Maafa 21. Now, uh, explain what Maafa is and, 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 and give us the gist of this, because I showed this to my class when I was teaching an ethics class at Southwestern, and they were speechless. I mean, they were horrified and speechless. Uh, Mafa21.com, Mafa21.com, that's where you can go get it. And, and I do encourage everyone to get this DVD now. Just just go right now and get it. It traces uh, abortion from the days of slavery all the way up to Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, today. And it, in detail, uh, documents how eugenicists have worked to eliminate the African-American population. We come all the way up. Now, Walter, tell us, tell us what, what, what is a eugenicist? A eugenicist is someone uh, that is concerned about population, and they want to control it. And the way they control it is either to have more babies than someone else. They'll pick a population, they'll pick a race, and decide we want more of this race and less of that race, and so we want to control that population. Uh, negative eugenics is where they decide, well, we'll just eliminate this population. In other words, we'll kill, we'll murder, we'll just end this population in order to control it. And people don't yeah. realize, people don't realize, Walter, that eugenics, negative eugenics, started in the United States, and Germany imported it. The Nazis imported eugenics from the United States. They did. Uh, there's plenty, there's ample evidence to demonstrate how Margaret Sanger, the uh, original founder and president of Planned Parenthood uh, consorted with the Nazis as well as the Ku Klux Klan. And, uh, you know, if you went to county fairs in the 1920s and the 1930s, there were always eugenics groups with with uh, booths explaining how to appro- improve the human race through selective breeding and, <laughs> and, and eugenics. Um, we're getting ready to have to go to a break, Walter. Can you hang on for a second? Um, segment because i want to talk some more about this because i i want to know how the african-american community is reacting as they find out about this because um this is uh, this is serious i mean this 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 is something that every african-american and every american should be concerned about that music means we've got to go to a break we'll be right back after this break 